Alright, so head over this way. Now we're gonna go um, save Isa. But before we save Isa, we're gonna get Ending Blow. Alright, we're not gonna get Ending Blow, we're gonna activate the Wolf for Ending Blow. And that's extremely important because you can't defeat Ganondorf without it. Uh, if you land on the ground here, you will take 4 hearts of damage as Wolf. So uh, please land in the water so you don't die. Now you can reduce lag here by doing a C down or a C right. I like to do C right because it's cool. Like that. Kinda tricky, but it looks cool. So you just like you don't look at the water and you re you reduce lag. So you head up over here and you ho howl. Okay, so it's down. Just remember to start with holding holding down, and uh, your OT uh, memory will kick in. As this is uh, Requiem of Spirits. D-pad left to close this, or right, I guess, doesn't really matter, but <laughs> moving to the left either way. And then before the sign, so you can roll without reading the sign. Talk to her, sword, roll, roll, roll. Now hold down left, and then do a roll stab and target. It's important to do the target. Alright, so... Like that, and then roll, roll, and then either charge like this or quick spin out of the roll. Text boxes, and then equip Uku on Y or X. Like it doesn't really matter, whatever floats your bone. But I like to have boomerang on X, and most people do. and then you warp away. Now we're going to empty all of the bombs in this pool. This is this is uh, why I redid why I've why I chose to redo do the tutorial mainly because this is a new route. So you equip well I guess okay, equip Uku and then bombs um, before you warp away. Wait, okay, so the fastest way is to B drop, but it's kind of hard. Oh my god. Let's see if I can try. The problem with B dropping is that that will happen. But yeah, um, stand on the edge and just mash X like this. And then C st uh, turn your C stick around so you can see for choose. Because they can't hit you if you stand over there. So you empty all but three. So when you have three bombs left, you, <coughs> you move towards this chest. So you just you, do like, you, you drop them with B, like XB. And now we have water bombs. Then you warp away. So equip Uku and bombs before you warp away uh, when you are at Isa. And that, that should be a good equip. Now D pad and zoom out, Z, zoom in, and warp to. Uh, so as the main. Now we're gonna get the Goron bomb bag, and you need water bombs to get this, which is why we got that chest in Lake Bed. <clears throat> so, go behind this pillar, and now you are invisible. Equip uh, water bombs and iron boots. Try to land, oh gosh, over here. Pull out the water bomb, drop it with B, and then quick spin. And I missed. Epic. <laughs> Whatever. 
Um, this is where the German version is pretty cool. Look at how quickly I can mash these text boxes. Done. <laughs> um, so that's where German saves a bunch of time. So to Rocket Link, press Y. Link started to reach for the water bombs, so he's now in the animation of getting water, getting out the water bombs. So equip um, bombs over uh, over um, iron boots, and then close this item menu and press A when you see the water bomb above Link's head. There, and then equip um, claw shot. Now drop some bombs. Would be. <laughs> instead of throwing them. And then pull out one bomb here and turn wolf. So X and Z. Like that. I see it down here so I can get a better camera before I jump off. Now this is where map glitch comes to play and I recommend using the the unplug strat where is where <laughs> which is where you you unplug your controller from the port and then you hold D-pad right, or D-pad left in this case now. But yeah, if, if the minimap is up, it's D-pad right, if it's down, then it's left. So you hold you hold D-pad right and Z. You see right there, I got the item menu, which is why I'm not using this controller. Because when I hold D-pad right and Z, I usually bring up the, the items instead of the D-pad, like the map. So what I do uh, in my runs is that I... <laughs> Oh, there's so many cables. So I unplug this controller and then I use this shitty old controller, which is a much better D-pad. So I hold the D-pad right and Z, and then I plug in. So like right now, no, nothing is in my Wii. So I hold D-pad right and Z, and then I plug it in. And right there, I did map glitch. That's the safest way of doing it. So then just uh, you you um, you zoom out of here zoom in here and press Z to enable warping and select this more proper way and it interrupts you now you just press B um, and then I use this controller for snow peak but it's uh, I don't really like this controller and since I don't need to go fast right now I will unplug and plug in my white controller the good one the way we used to do map glitch was to simply press D-pad and Z at the same time. And uh, if you got it correctly, you would open the minimap and then warp away and Midna would, would interrupt you. But it's not 100% consistent because you are a human being. Um, but the unplug strat is 100% consistent if you actually manage to bring up the map and not the item menu. So dash, skip cutscene, dash again. Keep to the right. Then just keep dashing forward. And then take this path and you will dash cancel automatically. If you put on senses here, then you will not be able to take them off until you take a hit. So these enemies can hit you and you will you will uh, go out of senses. But yeah. Don't put them on. It's kind of awkward how you uh, climb this heap of like this uh, mountain without like while being at full speed. You can bonk right there. Like, if you dash right here, you can bonk. And then keep to the left, quick climb, climb with this, keep to the right, quick climb. And then climb to the right here and up here. Sharp turn. C stick. Or, like, you don't have to, but I usually. I think I usually use C stick there. Might use control stick. B hop. Important, B hop, don't wait for A to like do a dash, you can just press B. <sighs> so you can bonk this as well, like this edge right there, and this as well. Uh, be careful to not fall down, play this song. I'm really bad at this song, but we'll, we'll see. That song took me a long time to learn when I did runs, like I usually messed it up uh, in one way or, an or another. So the reason why we call that statue is that now we are in a new place and loading zones are back to normal because of that statue. So we just leave and Snow Peak is now back to normal. But we're past all the areas where the game would like void you out because you didn't have the Reek Fish scent. 
So now we can dig here. If you dig here without uh, howling at the statue, the game will soft lock, and that's it. GG. Your last save point will be will be Lake Bed after claw shot or uh, gorge skip if you didn't get the first streamer and failed it once. This cave has keys. Uh, everybody hates this cave. You want to turn into wolf about here and then press X and C up and then aim with the claw shot. So, oh god, okay. X, C up, Y. So you drop a bomb like that and then A, X, B. And then roll and then X, B. Or X and C up. Oh gosh. Okay, that's not good because you can slash. Oh my god. Okay. X, B. If you keep holding target and press B and you will slash, like I said earlier. Skip. Okay, so I'm gonna save just for safety. Actually, no. Um, well, okay, so... Hmm. Um, right now, we have... We have... Um, this is the real bomb bag. This is the real bomb bag. And this is the fake bomb bag. We got the fake bomb bag. Okay, so I'm, it's important to understand why we do what we do. So this is the fake bomb bag we got from Isa. It has water bombs in it. It originally had normal bombs, but I emptied all all of them in the pool in Lake Bed to get uh, an empty, l stolen, lent, whatever you want to call it, bomb bag. Then I got water bombs in them in order to get the Goron bomb bag, which is this one. So the whole point of stealing the bomb bag from Isa is to get a real bomb bag. And we now have a real bomb bag, it's this one. So I don't give a crap what happens to this to this bomb bag. I could not care less because right before Morpheal we will get water bombs in our real bag. BRB. Apologize, but that's uh, that's how it is when you don't live on your on your own. <laughs> you get interrupted. Okay, 
so I don't care what happens to this bomb bag because I already got the real bomb bag using these water bombs. So if you press start and you go to save and you see like the three file menus, if you go that far, this bomb bag gets corrupted and it will have normal bombs, I believe. The water bombs will turn into normal it turn into normal bombs. Or it will be empty. I don't even I don't even remember. Um, but this bomb bag will get messed up. But that's fine because I don't care what happens to this bomb bag because I got these. And that these this is the only bomb bag I care about now. So uh just for the sake of uh well actually no, it's fine. I can die on purpose if I mess this up. But yeah, um you want to equip the boomerang now because you're gonna do <clears throat> you're gonna do an LJ and technically it's better to equip them on Y and then drop bombs as you're going. So we're, gonna, we're gonna skip these messengers. And I was slightly too far. So if you're too far you'll like slide off like that. And I will have one heart less. Drop some bombs and then like that, that's a good angle. So by doing this I will now skip the shadow beasts, the messengers. I will spawn here. I will now have I will now have half half a heart, so avoiding now is bad. Press B. He will ask you if you are on a spiritual journey and you say no. So um, well voiding out is bad in general, but if you if you uh, if I void out now now I will get a game over, so I'll lose even more time. <clears throat> this is blind snowboarding because you can barely see anything. It saves time and it's fast. Well, that yes, yeah, it saves time. It's fast. Bonk this tree. Uh, you should have like dropped a bomb before bonking that, and then hop off. All right. So, blind snowboarding. I can fail this. Uh, it's not easy. It's pretty hard. I haven't done this in a while, so I can definitely see myself failing this. Hopping on the snowboard increases speed, so do that. Okay, follow what I'm doing here. Sharp left turn, quick spin. That was kind of bad. Whatever. It's like a little shortcut you can do. Uh, no rupees will spawn now, so just keep hopping. There are no treetop rupees to get. Holy shit, I'm, I can't believe I bought there. I barely had an angle towards it. Anyhow. Bonking is fine, you don't take damage by doing that. There's an invisible icicle you can bonk into there. Okay, I'm just gonna try to do this. Practice this, kids. It's important to practice this. Oh gosh. So you can hold A and then move around the control stick, or you don't need to. But if you hold A, then it's gonna you're gonna move differently than from people who don't hold A. It's gonna take a bit longer before the game registers. Drop a bomb. Jump attack to skip midnight, midnight uh, text box. Jump. <laughs> My side hop, Jesus. Okay. And then jump attack here as well. And then just drop bombs as you run up here. Roll step, quick spin. There we have hearts. Uh, you enter. <laughs> that side up was pretty golden. Anyway, roll. Uh, do a roll. Target roll and skip cutscene. Like skip cutscene and then target roll. Run up here because it's slightly faster to go up the stairs than to go around by a few frames. And the thing is, you can drop two bombs as you drop down. So when I hop off here, I will press XXB. Like that, but <laughs> I had a bit, of, bit of, I had a pretty bad angle. But you will land here and then roll and then do a really sharp, like really sharp left turn, and you will get to the right, to the left door. Then equip uh, Quasar and Boomerang. Try to open this door from the left side because if you can open it from the left side, you can press X or like the, boom the button for the Boomerang, pull sword, and then now you can jump. Just like you don't need to move at all. If you enter through the right door, I'll show you something else you can do. You don't need to like go back to this room and then re-enter through the left door. If you enter through the right door like this, don't panic, just see up and aim like that, and then jump. And you're good. 
Uh, if you enter to the left door, then just jump, just like X, B, A. Uh, you press A when the boomerang is on, like over this void right here. And you will land over here, and then just see up and aim, and you can see like these white lines right there. Let's see. So you see, oh, it's kind of dark on my capture card, but you see this white line. Like this is a box inside a box. So that's a square, and then you see this little square inside. So you move to this spot right there. So you aim right there. So that's the first one, and that's the second one, and then you aim at the corner there. And if you go through the right door, then it's still the same spot, you just need to adjust, so it's like... Ah, uh, where is it? You should be able to get it from here as well. I just don't know the visual cue because I usually enter from the left door. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, so it's this one from... If you enter the left door, and then it's this one if you enter the right door. That makes sense. So I'm gonna assume you, you enter through the left door. Far shot here. Roll, 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 roll. Roll once, up, up left, instantly. Let go, and then don't move further, for, further forward. And the reason for this is that um, we're gonna attempt a double LGA. So the first one, you will like get 99, 99 of 100 times you will get it. But the second one is like kind of iffy because this door right here, uh, there's like there's a door frame that goes out of bounds, and if the boomerang is like over it, it will not work or something. Uh, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but this door uh, extends a bit out, out of bounds, and if the boomerang like goes past that door frame out of bounds over here, it won't work. So. The double LJ can fail, even though the boomerang is through the wall, just because of that stupid door frame. Um, but if if the boom if the second double like if the second LJ fails, you will just do a normal jump attack. But you will still be on this if you stand here, because you will just jump attack from. Let's see, you will jump attack from here to there. You'll like jump attack almost in place. You will still land on this chandelier if you start off by standing about here, like, after doing one roll up left. Target, target, target. It goes out of bounds, I'll try again. If that didn't work, I would have landed on the edge here, but I wouldn't have voided out, which is good. You can void out here if you want to, or you can be be cool and do the fast run, which is quickly to get up in, into this corner here. It's not as precise as getting like, on the very pixel edge. Uh, if you do... <laughs> Epic. <sighs> okay, I'll just do this. If you do this and then climb back up, you're close enough to the edge. The LJ will work now. But if you actually you do that as a setup, like actually fall off on purpose, then it's faster to just void out. But just get close to the edge and then aim right above like, have the circle of boomerang be right above this the end of the ice school right there. And then equip bombs. So, honestly, equip bombs as soon as you land, and then... And then do two rolls, like... Or... XP and then do one roll and walk. So, tap up right like that, side up left and pull out a bomb. Like that, and same again. Target roll. R. And target roll again. And then you can do X, B, A. I've dropped way too many bombs now because I failed the LJ once. Um. Free clip. Um. It's like I can't show you the free clip and then like regret and then do something else. But I, what I can do is that, okay, I can show you the freezer clip, and then I can show you... Well, no, I'll just I'll just do this, honestly. Okay, so, if you don't want to do a freezer clip, uh, it's like, kind of hard. But it's it's perfectly doable, but if you just don't, if you feel uncomfortable and don't want to do it, you don't need to do it. It's fast, it saves like 40 seconds over this method, probably. Probably more, I don't know. But you can just uh, roll as human, roll right here, over to this cannon push it so it faces the freeze art and then place um, any bombs like 
probably this one would be the, would be the best, but it doesn't matter. Uh, place a bomb down and fire and, and uh, kill the freezer. But I'll do a freezer skip. So wait for him to turn over here and uh, dash. And then you clip the freezer and not the pillar. Baby step and open. If you got hit again, turn like up left, hold target, and then side up to the right and mash A. So I'll try to explain that. Let's say the, this is the door I was just like, <clears throat> just about to open, and the freezer can hit me through the door. So I'm gonna cough. Hang on. So, um, if the freezer hits you through the door, shake free by spinning control stick, and then move over here, and then have an angle like this so the door is. So the right side of Link is on to the door, and then side up right, and then mash A, because your shield will sh your shield will shield the freeze uh, like the hit from the freezer, and then can just mash A to open it. If you didn't open it the way I just did it, and then mash A. So that's a backup. I'm not gonna drop more bombs here because I just I can drop one. Okay, how did I just do that? So, I first wait for him to swing like three times. Let's see. One, two, three, and right here I roll. And then I get as close to him as possible, and the, the ball and chain will go around him once more, and then I roll away. Like that. And then I roll, C stick, and then I roll again, and then I quick spin out of the roll. Like that. Epic. But yeah, so that's my... Okay, so you need to... In order for this guy to throw the ball and chain, you need to hug him, and you need to go far away from him as well. So I wait, wait for him to swing it a bit. If you go too early, then he, uh, like, he needs to like charge it up a bit first. And then roll. Dude, nice. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, you, three quick spins will do it. You can do a jumbo tag too, but the jumbo tag... The jump attack can hit, but the quick spin after the jump attack can miss. So, I recommend just doing quick spin, but you can do consecutive jump attacks as well. But you need to hit him five times with the damage of a quick spin, and the damage of a quick spin is the same as damage of a jump attack, and also a roll step. So if you got the ball and chain and you hold down, because this is the room you want to enter. If you look at the blue thing on the minimap, it it indicates where you last were. So I came through that door over there, but there's a cutscene that played which placed me over here. So don't get confused and think that oh uh, I think that this is the way out. That is the way out. Um, equip ball and chain only. And then side up right, and then just hold up and X. And the repair should be over here now. And then you save warp. And let's see. I went on this, like you can see the three files. So let's see what happened to the bomb bag. It got corrupted, so it's now a normal bombs. So that's what happens if you go to this menu right here. So you save warp, and now you equip. Now let's see. You equip the ball and chain, and you equip. Uh, water bombs would be optimal. No, you equip the ball and chain Uku. Never mind. Ball and chain Uku. After the save warp. Because look at my equips. I have boomerang on X and, uh, and iron boots on Y. Because when you save warp after having like a steel, a lent bomb bag, after having the stolen bomb bag, your equips get like kind of corrupted, I guess. Like you get wrong equips. So now you need to equip again. So I equip these two. And then X and then X again. And the repeat will always be there. I might make an in-depth mor morphial tutorial, um, but I think I will just wing this and see how it goes. And if it's if if what I'm about to explain will be bad, I'll make an in-depth morphial tutorial. How about that? Is that a deal? Is that a deal, guys? Okay, so equip, equip bombs and boomerang. Okay. 
and then stand at this spot, this uh, <laughs> metal plate, and then Y, and then C up, and then you throw. You can see like the center of the boomerang places right there. It's like it's not precise, but just like somewhere over there. And then you empty these last bombs. And now, make sure it's empty. If, you, if this bomb bag is not empty, and you pick up this chest, you will get normal bombs. And there are more water bomb chests in Lakebed, but if you don't know Lakebed good enough, then you'll have like... You'll waste a lot of time looking for another water bomb chest. So yeah, draw a sword, roll, let go of everything, so you land here, and then jump B. Uh, I would recommend saving here for your first few runs, and I don't know, like saving wastes like I don't know, seven seconds, something like that. It wastes like more than five, less than ten seconds, but it's uh, pretty nice to save, so you can practice this. And if if your run is like good and you get a bad more feel, you know, you want to retry, then you can just save here and reset if you see that the more feel is going to be really bad. I will save. In fact, just for, uh, just why not, uh, things can go wrong, because Morphle is not easy peasy, even though uh, top runners say it's easy peasy, like me. Uh, thing is, Morphle, it's, if you're good at Morphle, like you can be good at Morphle, there's skill to Morphle and there's luck to Morphle, Mor you can get past Morphle with the shittiest luck ever. But you need to be really good at Morphil, and you need to have good prediction abilities, and you need to intercept your path and have godlike tap swimming and like everything. Like if you're really good at Morphil, like predicting your paths, tap swimming, all that stuff, managing your air, uh, if you know the animations of like sword pulling and whatever underwater, like if you if you know the game good enough, you can get past Morphil despite how bad luck you have. But the worse the luck, the harder it gets. That's like a rule of thumb. So, I would pull my sword here, roll, and then roll, and then jump attack, and I wanted to land here, and I would have taken the heart damage, but it's fine. You see this pillar right here, um, okay, so you can, you can skip, you can skip, um, the boss key several ways, you can do like the stair clip, stair clip method as well, but on average, it's as, just as fast as doing this, and this doesn't require good aiming, so I'll just teach you this method. You roll past this pillar, and then you press Y, and right before you hit the vines, you press B to drop the bomb, and then you go for the vine, and then you move to the left once. Um, if you don't press B while doing the setup I'm about to do, then you won't drop the bomb in time, and it will explode before you get to the vines. The reason why vine clip work <laughs> wow nice the reason why vine clip works is because your climbing animation gets interrupted by something like you take damage so the bomb explodes vine clip could probably work if an enemy hits you as well as long as it's like powerful enough attack so that link falls over that's my theory but I don't know for sure but the bomb will do that for you so you interrupt the climbing animation so you roll past this pillar and press y and then you press B, let's see. Here, and then go left. So I already started the climbing animation. It's hard to see, but I did. And then Y, and then X. Put on iron boots. You don't need to go far down here at all. Like, that's more than enough. Tap swim like this. Don't go too far up. Okay. That's good. And we'll clip through. Now strafe. Strafe left and right and put an iron boots. Left and right and iron boots. Oh no, I didn't put an iron boots. I'm screwed. We can put them on now. Or we can put them on now. But if you remember from earlier, what did what just happened? Link went underwater and then he went back up. But no air meter appeared. So what happens now? The air meter appears, and that air meter could have appeared later. So sink down, make it appear, swim up. Wait for it to go away, then put on boots. If you didn't do that this way, that I just did, the air meter would have, would have showed up earlier. So your goal is to strafe right and put on iron boots as soon as, like, fall down. 
still have them on during this loading zone. But you're not screwed if you don't manage to do that. Okay, Morfield, I'll just do my best at explaining this. Hold target, Y, to claw shot, side up. Okay, side up B. So I do like A and then I move over to the to to, um, to B like that to draw my sword and then I'm gonna do a jump attack and spin the control stick really fast. Then I pause as soon as I hit him. Equip over claw shot. Then you can just let go of everything in his buffer. So wait for this 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 quick spin animation to stop. It's almost over now, and now it's over, so why? Okay, now it's over now, so why? You can see like how his sword went from going some pointing that way to pointing this way, so he's now reaching for the water bombs. Equip ball and chain over iron boots, or like any item works, just have water bombs on Y and something that's not iron boots on X, and then close and don't do anything. Okay, so... It's important to keep Iron Boots on for a short amount of time before you start task swimming because I'm gonna float up now. So I need to keep Iron Boots on for like one second before I can actually start task swimming. Or else I'll just like keep floating upwards. So I need to stop my upwards momentum first. And I can do that by putting on Iron Boots for one second. So don't hold anything, just be ready with A, okay? A and item menu. Wait, A, item menu. Claw shot on iron boots. Keep them iron boots on for like one second. So I hold like up left now, and I put them on for like one second. Then I start test swimming. And okay, so I should do all the explaining now. So Morfiel will now do something. It's completely random what she will do, like which pattern she will use. But um, if she goes high up, like she will do, she will do a turn like this. She will go around like this, and then to the left, like she will go in like anti-clockwise now. She will turn over here and then end up here. Um, she can swim, like when she's approaching here, like she's turning like this and when she's here, she will either go up or down, or straight forward. So if she goes up, I will not tap swim as fast as I usually do because I want to float up a bit. If she goes down, I want to keep her mids on for a bit. So the tap swimming is will vary depending on what RNG you get right here. So this is why it's important to be good at tap swimming because if you if you're not then you will probably not get this first snipe every time. So keep them on for like one second so you can like stop your momentum and then start tap swimming up 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 left and keep a close eye on how if Morphil swims up or down. I didn't keep them on for long enough. This seems good. Oh man. She's swimming low. Four slashes. She's going up. Okay. You need to have that red that red hit right there, or at least the sound of Morphle getting hit. Okay, buffer. Uh, as few frames as possible, two is the minimum. So now our are off and we're gonna float. Like we're we're off Morphle now. The music stop, as you can hear. Equip water bombs and iron boots, and then put them on as soon as possible. C down. I'm not dead. I'm not dead, see? Don't press A too early or, or it will rocket link. So that was really close. Uh, she's being a bitch. Okay, so C down and target a lot so you can like see where she will go. Okay, now my job is to predict where she will go. She will go, oh god. Okay, I need to go far over here now, and then swim early. Mash for your life. Don't eat me. Okay, we're good. So, um, don't... Okay, so make sure that you swim high enough up so you don't claw shot this. Like this shell right here. Um, I was gonna say something earlier that was really important. So, um, yeah, my... So, if you... Okay. Swi swimming with water bombs. If you press A too early, you will rocket link, and if you rocket link, it's GG. Just save warp or reset if you already saved. If you saved after getting the bomb chest like I did, then just reset. If you didn't, then save warp. Rocket link is GG no matter what. Like, you cannot save yourself from rocket linking. Um, so, I was almost dead there. I got... 
good RNG on the very beginning because she sank low, so I just put an iron boots. Well, technically the best would be just keep going straight forward or even like up if I would have predicted that. She went down, which is fine. I had iron boots on, so I claw shot onto her. And then I did four slashes. I did some really nice buffering, so, so I didn't like waste time uh, at all with my air meter. And then I put on iron boots as soon as possible. The bad thing was that while I was slashing her, she went up. So I had a more distance to the ground after I was done slashing her. <clears throat> so, um, if I didn't, um, if I wasn't as efficient as I was with the buffering, like if I buffered w too many frames uh, as I tried to force and equip Iron Boots to get off more fuel, I wouldn't um, be able to survive that. So it's really important to have efficient tap swimming and efficient like buffering and yeah, put on iron boots as soon as possible after you close the menu and all that stuff to really um, to really like uh, save as much air as possible. So I barely survived. So this is like an example of terrible luck, where if you're good at more fuel, you can still make it, but it's just going to be so hard. <laughs> and that was like on the very edge of of drowning, but I still managed to survive. But now I had good luck because I couldn't. I couldn't like decide on where to go or anything. I just had to instantly like as soon as possible, but not rocket linking, uh, re refill my my air guard. And then she gave me bad luck, um, but she quickly gave me good luck again because she's from really far down, which is where she is right now. So I'm past her mouth, and now I'm gonna put on iron boots and then claw shot. If you don't put on iron boots before you claw shot, it might be GG. Like you need to have really good luck or it's GG. So I'm going to keep holding target now, I'm going to press X and then Y. And she ate me. I thought I would barely make it, it's fine though, I can swim up and then... Fuck. <laughs> okay, so, that could have worked, but I mashed X, so I put them on and off. You can get eaten and then she will spit you out and you can like swim up a tiny bit, or even don't need to swim up and then you can still manage to claw shot her. So I thought I was past her like range of eating me, but I was just barely enough past it. It's fine if she eats you, but you only had three hearts, so don't get eaten too much. It takes one heart of damage. So I could have made it even though she ate me there, but I panicked kind of, so I, like, I mashed X, so I put them on and off. Um, so, put on Iron Boots before you put um, Water Bounce over Claw Shot, because if I now... Like, Right now, I have the water armaments on, if you can see that. Uh, if I didn't have them on, my cl the claw shot is in my hand because I just attempted the claw shot more feel. If I would have uh, done the equip now and then put on iron boots, I wouldn't have been able to because Link would have prioritized to put away the claw shot and then put on iron boots. And tiny things like that make a huge difference because that's like two seconds of air <laughs> that you need. So put on iron boots and then equip over claw shot. See, now he puts, puts it away. I guess like one second or whatever. Oh god, this pattern. Okay. Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I thought that would happen. Alright. So, target again, see down, all that stuff. Okay, I'm gonna predict that she's gonna come over here. So I'm gonna hold control stick like directly right and then flick C stick and everything. Alright, please notice me somehow. Alright, target, iron bits, and claw shot. So I let go of target and just did C down. That was the fourth hit. I want your head to be down. Unequip iron boots, and then I'm gonna go for the re grab now. So I'm gonna exit out of this eye menu, hold target. And the direction. Okay, I'm gonna hold the direction towards Morfield now. Uh, close item menu, and then hit target and Y, and then mash A. You can see my air gauge. It's still, it's still blue. If you activate ending blow now, where my air gauge is right now, you can still make it. But if it's blue while you activate ending blow, you're good. Um, if you activate ending blow while it's red, it can be good, but only if it was red for like one second or less. If it's been red for a while, like you barely have air left, then you're probably not going to make it. 
So the force unequip iron boots on the on the final hit, as I did, did right there. I waited for her head to go down, because then she would throw me off in a way that I would be able to re to re grab her with a claw shot as soon as possible. Uh, it was looking kind of grim, like that wasn't a clean war feel. Um, I think that was like. For this tutorial's sake, that was a really good Morfield because it showcased bad and good luck all at once. Um, so the first hit, Iron Boots on, Force Stabs, uh, Force Unequip Iron Boots. And then the second hit, uh, Iron Boots on, Claw Shot her, four hits, and then re-grab. If, if you have little air, then you just have to YOLO and go to go for the re grab. But yeah. Um I would say always go for the re grab. Um I don't really see a reason why you shouldn't go for it. Um because you're gonna buffer anyway for whether her head is up or down. So when her head is down and she's not uh colliding into a pillar, then it will work. If she's doing a really sharp turn, uh, then, it pr then it might not work. Uh, Dragon Bane has a video on regrabbing Morphil, I can link it in the description. It will explain pretty much everything I just said. Uh, in like, in like uh, great detail by stopping it and looking at several examples of when it will work and when it will not work. So yeah, um, hold direction towards Morphil, put away the item menu, target and Y, and then mash A for the ending blow. You want to activate the ending blow as soon as possible, depending on... Like, if you have very little air left, and you might just be like one frame late on activating it, then yeah, it's pretty bad, so mash for your life if you have low air. But I mash in general. I'm just gonna get all the hard containers for this tutorial. You don't need all of them, but it's... It's a hard game. You take a lot of damage in Pals of Twilight. Easily, so... We're just gonna get them all for this tutorial. But if you want a, if you want a really good time, then you might consider skipping them. But that's like a really good time because it takes like a few seconds to pick up a hard container, and that's like nothing compared to like if you don't have a godlike time. So don't worry. So minutes per hour. This is uh, pretty straightforward. Quite literally, that's a bad joke. Um, there is some some technical stuff in minutes per hour, but just a f just like a couple of things, like nothing big, uh, but some nice time savers you can do, which I will point out. You can see the golden wolf right there. It's the one that will give us ending blow right after we've done minuses per hour. Do not forget to uh, to get ending blow. Because as I said earlier, you can't defeat Gandorf without it. You actually, the game actually checks for you to see if you have ending blow. So I did ending blow on Morphil, and you'll do it on Argrok too. But that's just, just like a battle prompt. Don't mash A here. I'm just gonna talk to the kids. It's just like a battle prompt, so it won't it won't actually check your hidden skills to see if you actually have ending blow. It will just always be there. But for Ganondorf, the game will actually check. So. Even though you can't skip ending blow casually, so uh, it's kind of funny. They did it like just for speedruns. B hop. Now uh, some pretty lame text boxes. I'm just too lazy to mash with both my thumbs now, so I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> the way I'm recording this, like, I'm sitting in this chair with my webcam, like, on the top of the chair. And, like, on, on the top of the chair's back. So, the back is, like, right here of the chair. So, my back is hurting. And I gotta sit with my legs, like, in a weird way. So, uh, I shouldn't record for long periods of times. This is kinda uh, painful. <laughs> Push it once, climb up and dash. 
left side up, and then climb up. Skip cutscene and hold target, then hold down left. So skip, target, down left, and then left side up, and then climb up here. Preferably up here. And then you dash right there. Like a, kind of like a soft dash, and you will skip all those parts. And you get circles, see that? You went in circles, just like in Skyward Sword. Oh man. B hop, B hop, B hop. With targets. Because this pole, this pole hovers so loud, so low on the ground that uh, you can just B hop it until it's dead. This guy, text boxes. And then just one text box after all that. So that's the only, that's like the only point in any percent where you can just mesh, where you can just hold up and target and B twice to, to kill it. Keep, keep to the left, keep to the left here, um, because you can dash for longer, so you dash here and then there's the stick, right next to the torch. The other stick on the other side is like further away from the torch. Oh my god, what? <laughs> Alright, like that. And then let's see if I can get the quick climb. Right there, yep. So kind of tricky one. Uh, now let's see, equips should be, let me think, it should be um, just Claw Shot and Lantern. But no, actually it doesn't matter because we need to equip later, the Ball and Chain later. So I guess the optimal equips would be, like it doesn't matter because we got to do two, two equips anyway. So just equip Lantern, lantern at least, Lantern Wolf, and then do a right side up right here for spike points. So it's also faster, and then dash forward like that. Because if you just dash straight forward, then you won't be able to dash cancel it. Okay, so the strat for this guy, I'm just gonna keep charging B. So you can do this multiple ways, so I'm just gonna do it this way. So hold B, release, and then he will flee, and then jump attack him. And if he falls into the water, he's dead. And if he doesn't die, then he will snipe you from the very top. Like this guy, like that guy will always hit you no matter what, he needs to die. So keep that in mind. You can back hop or side hop or just move, move away from the arrow, but I like to just hold B and release. All right. So you can save some time on these ropes by jump attacking the the ball blinds here. And let's see for this guy. Pay attention, yellow arrow, jump. So the guy is like he's running up to me, and then I jump attack him. And then you can you can jump past this this rope, but so hold is like up directly up left notch here. And then, yellow arrow, jump. Don't jump too early, don't jump too late. If you jump with the timing I just used, then you're fine. Early cycle, go to the left or right of that guy. Keep mashing A like the whole time, pretty much. Uh, you can make this by mashing A pretty much consistently, but I like to dash cancel. I like to dash cancel here, like that. We don't need to, actually. and then left, there you go. So that's early wind cycle. It's uh, a bit tricky. Um, it saves like five seconds maybe. I don't really know exactly, but it's not a big deal. But it's cool to get. So that's like, last time we were here we held upright and mash start and A, but now you just have to mash A, uh, a not start. Because there's no cuts in that time, and it's also for that jump where, you, where you, like you hold upright and then you dash before going in this uh, spiral up to Zelda. It's not directly in the top right notch; it's slightly more left. So fun fact. Remember to get this uh, this wolf. It's uh, very important. Get up and B to stab him. The 
this guy will give you the ending blow. So, unfortunately, we we cannot quick spin him from from the where we're still initially standing. So we gotta do a jump attack or a walk and then quick spin. So it's better to just do a jump attack. And yeah, that's it. Now we're gonna warp to uh, Lake Hylia and enter Gerudo, the Gerudo camp. So, map, warp with your map. Remember to warp with your map because it's faster than talking to mid now uh, by pressing Z. Now, let me think. Uh, my Morphle wasn't good, so I only have four bombs left. Um, that's the problem about Morphe. Um, you have enough bombs to, t to kill Morphe. But the thing is, you need um, you need two water bombs for Zant. Um, if you want to be safe, you can you can use three. Like you can manage with two, fine. But the first air refill can be a bit spooky if you're a new player. So uh, a lot of people that are new use three bombs. So I have four, so I'm I'm good. Like I can finish the game, no problem. Um, it's important to defeat Morfield having two or more water bombs left. If not, then you will have to get the water bomb in city. So when you enter city in the sky later in the run, there's a water bomb that will give you 15, um, and that's plenty enough for the rest of the game. Um, so have two or more for Zant. It's very important. Um, I have four left now, so I'm going to use two in AG in Arborist Grounds, and then. There is uh, like there are two for Zen, so that's four. So that means I have no bombs left. Uh, but you're also going to use two bombs for Hyrule Castle, and you definitely want to use. Okay, jump attack up, Wolf. You definitely want to use two there, or like at least one. Try to jump attack up there. So uh, skipping the water bomb chest and seed in this guy saves a bunch of time because it's kind of. It's kind of out of the way. Like it's, it's in the same pool that um, you get that you land in when you enter city, but it's kind of slow to get it, so it's best to not do it. So I have four bombs left. So that means uh, in this situation I would not use any bombs in Arborist Grounds. I would use two for for Zant, but uh, you could use three if you're new because um, without. Without enough practice, it's uh, a bit spooky. So then you would have like one less for Hyrule Castle. I will use two. I will teach you the two method. It's not like super hard or anything. It's just you just need to know what you're doing. So equip the <coughs> the memo and ball and chain. Hold up and like if you don't hold up, you will take damage when you land here. And then turn wolf. I'm gonna try to do um, some cool movement here. Let's see. Nice. Press Z. Don't press it too late. If you press it too late, then you will enter this. <coughs> you will enter this plum cutscene, and that's like I don't know, 15 seconds, something like that. 10. Uh, if you enter the plum cutscene, stay wolf. Run over here. Scare the guy. Like he will get scared, but then you just you transform into human here and talk to him. Uh, I target him and press Y. The reason why I target him is just because I want to make sure that I actually give him the thing. If you talk to him normally, he'll just give you a normal cannon ride, so make sure to actually give this thing to him, or else he will shoot you up uh, north of Lake Hylia. So, uh, shoutouts to CFG, who found a 4 second time saver by hitting C down, so you can't see as much as of this area. You pretty much just keep following this path right here, and then you can just go over here. There are several ways to cross this, this, um, this desert. And then just jump, like dash at the edge there. 
if you don't dash, then you might not have enough speed, so you might void out. So keep that in mind. Just gonna see where I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm just gonna go towards that brown rock. So this clip works differently if Wolf Link is looking at these guys. So keep that in mind. It might happen to me, but yeah, he'll turn his head completely around if, if these guys are close, so you'll know. Just hold hold X here, and then match the DNA. Like that. Okay, so you're actually clipping the wall and not the fence. Look at the angle I get, I get here. So my angle towards the wall was like this much. It's almost like I'm gonna bonk the wall. So for that clip, remember, you're not clipping this fence, you're clipping the wall. Jesus, he's a good sniper. So yeah, like with this kind of angle towards the wall, uh, keep that in mind. So you're clipping the wall, not the fence. And you'll have a much easier time. You could just turn into human and steal a boar and use that, but it's, it's slower. So again, I'm gonna do map glitch. Uh, I highly recommend doing the unplugged strat here. Because if you fail this, you will lose a shit ton of time, so... I will definitely use the unplug strat here. Let's see. Alright. And then you uh, zoom out, zoom in, Z, warp. And then you turn into human. But I don't want to use this controller, so... <laughs> and I'm not doing a run, so I can just switch it right now until... I usually switch it while I'm falling out of bounds here. But I'm just gonna switch it now. Alright. So you turn into human. Uh, now you can just fall and fall without voiding out. So the trigger is like it's like like there the ground the ground I mean ends there. So it's like this line over here. So you look towards the camp here, and what I what I <coughs> use as my visual cue is that I look at the minimap. So you see this. Uh, that's you, this yellow thing, and you want the back there to be um, aligned with this black line as you're holding target. If you have an angle like this, you can see like it's kind of the back is going like this with a line like that, so it's not lined up properly. But now it is with the black line like straight with that thing. So if you have an angle like that, then you're good. Because okay, so I should I will actually draw this in paint because people uh, my think is too precise. It's not super precise. Trust me. I'll uh, I'll draw. I'll draw. Let's uh, let's do this. All right. So let's zoom in. Uh, maybe one more. Uh, okay. Let's 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 do that. So. All right. So the angle you can have. Okay, so Bulblin, eh, Bulblin is like inside here, like in the middle. You want an angle that is get red. You want an angle that is anywhere in between here. Honestly. This might work too. So, uh, the further forward you go, the further away you will be from something that you're le relating to on the minimap. Like, it's also turning night now. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the angle is like. Dude, you can't even see the cursor. Epic. Uh, but, yeah. Let's see. Oh, now you can see it. Okay. So. Yeah, anywhere in between here will work. So now I will get this angle, which is like right in the middle, which is perfect. So yeah, I have an angle like that, and it's good. So it's not, it's lenient, it's not like super precise, it's just like, that's, that's how you should look at it. Okay, like picture it like that. So you see right here, it's really dark, but you see right there, that's the camp, and I'm going straight forward towards that camp. So equip um, uh, claw shot and lantern, and you can pay close attention to the minimap, like right there. It's I'm going like straight through the camp, and that's a good angle to get. It can be slightly left, it can be sli slightly right, but this will work. 
and then skip the cutscene and then approach him, target a jump attack and chain it into a quick spin. So as soon as you approach him, his guards his guard is down, so you can jump attack him and chain it into a quick spin right away. Um and then just keep doing quick spins. Uh, this guy will do, I believe, three hearts of damage. It might be four. I think it's three. But I'm not 100% sure. So, please don't get hit, because you can die. <laughs> and if you die, you will... I'm not sure if you will soft lock. You might soft lock, because you did map glitch. Just be careful, like... Don't quick spin too much. After, after doing four quick spins, then back up. I like that's a good rule of thumb. Start in A. Then turn wolf. And jump attack up on the stairs. And enter AG. And I will end the part right here. So, I'll see you in AG.